Well, welcome to Adaptive Curriculum. I would like to show you uh, one of our activity objects that I think really shows how Adaptive Curriculum tries to be create an engaging context, how it's a strong interactions, and how they're significant interactions. It's not something that's over within two or three minutes. You'll see that this is at least a 25 to 40 minute activity object uh, if you were a middle school student. So we're going to look at one called mutualism. And I'm going to play the introduction and notice how we engage the learner in the context. We don't just say, oh, today you're going to learn about mutualism, but we create an engaging scenario. The relationship between two organisms which live together is called symbiosis. In symbiosis, one partner may affect the other in various ways. Look at the picture of the crocodile and the Egyptian plover bird. What do you think is happening here? And let me just pause it right there. One of the things that's nice about adaptive curriculum is you can rewind and view it again. And a lot of people ask me, hey, where'd you get that photograph from? And I like to tell them, well, that's not a photograph. It's our illustrations. Our, our illustrations are, I think, the best in the educational business in terms of really presenting nice three-dimensional graphics. And we use this context and students look at it and they wonder, well, why isn't the crocodile eating the bird? And it creates a question in their mind. And good teaching uses those questions to help deliver the content. Crocodile and the Egyptian plover bird. What do you think is happening here? This is an example of a symbiotic relationship called mutualism. Both animals benefit from the interaction. After crocodiles eat, they have bits of decaying meat between their teeth. But the Egyptian plover feeds on those bits of meat. In this activity, you will be the bird and eat the meat. Hold down the mouse button until the food is eaten. Okay, so you see the instructions, and whenever there's instructions, there's a number that lets you know where you should do that instruction. And so, can we have a volunteer? Sharon, would you <laughs> volunteer to come up? Good. And Sharon's going to move the mouse around until it, the meat lights up, and then you're going to hold the mouse key down until all the meat is gone. So we don't want you to, just to peck, but just to hold the key down until it's gone. <laughs> Good. Now, we told the students that, hey, the plover bird gets to eat the decaying meat and the crocodile benefits from a clean mouth, but when they do it and experience it, it becomes much more understandable. They can see the plover bird is actually eating something. They can see the health If you harm the crocodile, its mouth will no longer be a safe place for you. Now, the only tip I ever need to give anybody is whenever you have that black bar come across the screen, then you just kind of click anywhere in the black bar and close that and then you can go on. Good. So keep going. And whenever I do this, I always have a sudden need to dental floss after after the activity object. 